are we headed for a recession? And if yes, what should I be doing right now? Is there anything that I can do? Stick around until the end of this video where I'm going to share some practical things that you can do right now. So first of all, you might be saying, what is a recession? So the common definition of what a recession is, it's where we find ourselves with two consecutive quarters of GDP decline. And you may be wondering, what is GDP? Well, GDP is the gross domestic product. And if what that, what that is, it measures the health of a country's economy. So GDP measures the monetary value of goods and services that are bought by the end user like yourself and myself produced in a country over a period of time. An example of this might be me buying my iPhone at the Apple store or paying for my favorite meal at my favorite restaurant. A service, on the other hand, is me paying the doctor that I visit or my chiropractor when I visit them for the services that they render. So if the GDP is positive for successive quarters and the economy is growing and expanding, it is often referred to as a boom. If, on the other hand, we have negative growth for two successive quarters, the economy is often referred to as being in a recession or bust. Okay, so what then causes a recession? It's generally a decline in the confidence by businesses and individuals like you and myself that times aren't going as good as what we would like. It's normally accompanied by high unemployment rates, so more people are losing their jobs. It's also accompanied by people wanting to save money and they are spending less on things that they normally would be spending money on. And while that's good for you as an individual, it actually has a negative effect in the economy because by you not spending money at your favorite restaurant, you are in turn not paying money or spending money. And as a result of that, people at work there are losing their jobs, as an example. It's also accompanied by a decline or a slowdown in terms of manufacturing. So instead of organizations who manufacture, let's say, cars a certain amount, like a couple of thousand per year, they've reduced that significantly. So again, they're not selling as many cars because people aren't buying and then people are losing jobs. So it's like the cycle. Prices may even fall below what they are now, and it could result in deflation and this results where the cost of things as I said are lower because they want to encourage you to buy but remember in that season we are generally saving and holding on to our cash in the event that we possibly lose our jobs or we have less hours that we are working so we are trying to keep cash in order to pay our bills as and when they become due. Interest rates also tend to fall during this time but banks are less inclined to actually give people money because they are concerned that people are not going to be able to pay the, their loans back. So it's just an interesting time overall for the economy in a particular country. So what is it that you can do right now in the event that we find ourselves in a recession? I say in the event because we're not, nobody knows when this can, is going to happen. Yes, there might be signs in the market pointing to that, but nobody can pinpoint that we're definitely going to have one. But there are certain things you can do whether or not we do end up having one or whether or not we don't, these are good things that you can do right now to protect yourself should we get there and even if we don't get there. Number one, pay down those credit cards. Generally, credit cards carry variable interest rates and they're normally really high. So they end up taking a lot more of your money in terms of your interest payments. And as a result of that, you have less money to either set aside for savings or to pay off other debt. By paying off your credit cards quicker, this will create some breathing room in your budget or your spending plan. Number two, have a budget, or as I call it, a spending plan, so that you know where your money is going. Also that you aren't spending money on things that don't add any value to your life. This will allow you to cut down on, on those unnecessary expenditures and will allow you to allocate the funds that you have the things, as I said, that are truly important to you, and that's going to be your goals, paying off debt, and also setting aside funds for any emergencies that do come about. Hey guys, before we continue with this video, just a quick question. Uh, do you find yourself in a position where you've been concerned about a looming recession? Might happen, might not happen? Comment below. What are your thoughts? What are you doing right now to protect yourself and your family from this possible thing? I say possible thing because we just don't know what's, uh, what's going to happen in the future. Number three, I just mentioned that emergencies, it's important to have a fully funded emergency fund. I know that some people say I have $1,000 or 10,000 Rand, but I, I am of the belief that we should be 
positioning ourselves to have at least six months worth of emergency funds so that you've, if a emergency does arise, if you do lose your job, if you do have less hours that you are going to work or your spouse is going to work, that you're going to be able to pay your bills as and when they become due. By having that fully funded emergency fund, it's going to take the burden off of your shoulders in the event that we find ourselves in that position where we find ourselves in a recession or where you are not able to make as much money from your place of employment as what you normally do. Number four, recession-proof your career. Whether you are just graduating from high school or whether you've been working for any length of period, invest in your education. Find yourself in a position where your job is recession-proof. And what I mean by that, there's certain professions which we will always need, which are not seen as a luxury. So these are jobs like nurses. These are jobs like the engineers and, and, and people like that. We need these people. So as a result of that, when other people are losing their jobs, normally these people are able to continue with their jobs just because we, we need them and we, we appreciate them. Another thing that's also important when it comes to recession-proofing your career is to, to network with people. So in the event that you do lose your job, that if you've got a good network, that you'll be able to replace your job really quickly. The fifth thing, which I believe is equally as important to all four of the, the previous points that I just mentioned, is do not panic and do not stop setting aside funds for your future. Recessions come and they go. It's just a part of life. And oftentimes when people are confronted by recessions because they haven't planned, they haven't set aside funds, they stop investing in their future. They stop contributing to their 401k. They stop contributing towards their retirement funds. And as a result of that, the powerful concept of compound interest stops working on their behalf. So if, I, if there's one thing I want to encourage you guys in the midst of this, start thinking about it now. How can you free up funds? So let's say you were not in a position to continue to work for whatever reason for a period of, of time, are you able to still contribute an extra 10 bucks to your retirement fund or 50 bucks or 100 or, or whatever it is? Just make sure that you're still taking advantage of compound interest for your future. Your future self is going to thank you. So again, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your support on this channel. And if you've not subscribed yet, click subscribe and share this video with a family or friend. I look forward to catching up with you guys soon. God bless. Bye, guys.